Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined today by Mike Bennett, who's the CEO of Z Energy. Uh, Mike, welcome to interest.co.nz and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, obviously big news this week is your second retail bond mm. offer is out there. Um, now you're, you're looking for up to 150 million, 7.25% interest, seven year term. Um, what do you think your prospects are of getting the, the full 150? I think our prospects are quite good. We've obviously taken advice from the brokers about the appetite out there, and we've even had some of our current bondholders ringing us up saying, look, could I have more exposure to your company? So we think by way of the, the, the coupon rate and the timing, we think we should have every expectation of getting at least 100, and 150 certainly seems probable. Yeah, and um, look, I mean, seven-year term is quite a lengthy one as well. Um, you, you, you're obviously, last year was six, so you're, you're sort of pushing out those terms a bit. Yeah, we feel now that we've had a chance to prove ourselves to both uh, our customers and our bondholders, we think we could be uh, more progressive with the term itself. Uh, key, key focus for us is actually to extend the maturity of our debt. On day one, when, when we started, we had core bank debt of $350 million over three years, and over the last 12 months, we've managed to extend that, and I think that's a really important thing to give us financial flexibility. And look, in, in the prospectus, there are a couple of mentions of, uh, of, of, of initial public offering, change of ownership type, you know, mm. if, if this was to happen. Is that something that we could see down the line for Z? Uh, it's currently not being discussed at all. We see lots of opportunity inside the company right now for the current shareholders. We don't see a big demand for capital beyond what we can currently raise through debt or through further shareholder injection, so we're really happy with the current situation. Look, and we've had a little bit of a look at the, the priority ranking of where the bondholders mm. fit in there. Obviously, you've got Shell as your supplier, so they have a, a priority, and the bank working capital, obviously, mm. in, in the unlikely event of, of, of any default, so that the business keeps trading. Um, mm. Any particular comments on, on how that's structured? Yeah, I think it's really important to realise that, you know, that attachment, if you like, for Shell and uh, the banks around working capital is all about the most liquid assets, if you excuse the pun. So in some cases, our obligations to Shell, we actually settle those before the, the crude or the products even arrive in New Zealand. So it never actually gets mixed up with our domestic uh, supply chain. But I think it's quite important to draw the distinction between the working capital, which is a very, very liquid asset, and actually the rest of the assets inside the firm. If you look at our balance sheet, you know, sort of about, uh, currently about 500 million of it sits in um, inventory um, on a balance sheet of about $1.2 billion of, of assets, so we're not highly leveraged towards working capital anyway. Okay, and look, uh, obviously um, the other big thing recently is your rebranding, mm. um, obviously going from Shell to Z. Mm. Um, how did you get to the, to, to the, the, the Z name, and uh, how's, how's that going so far? How are people reacting mm. to the name Z? So first of all, we were really thorough and considered about what we did. Uh, you know, I've gone on the record as saying that we did market research with 17,000 New Zealanders. That's like stopping everybody in Ashburton and asking them what's on their mind about our brand, our offers, how they see us, how they see the industry. And out of that it was pretty clear that people were looking for a change. They wanted to really get to understand us as a New Zealand company. For example, one of the comments was, well how can you call yourself a New Zealand company if you use the Shell brand? And that people felt they were, there was time for a different type of offer, a different experience at service stations. And we felt the best way to bring that to the market was to rebrand, change those offers, and actually, in a simple sense, give customers what they're looking for. And look, you're obviously making a lot of, of, of your New Zealandness, um, and with Infratil and the New Zealand Super Fund mm. as your owners, obviously two yeah. very sort of obviously New Zealand companies. Mm. Um, does this? Do you think this really matters, or, or, or do people just you know, want to find an easily accessible petrol station and, and, and cheap fuel? I mean, does, does does being a New Zealand company really matter? I think people, it's pretty clear that people buy on a combination of price and location. And you could say that sort of sets the competitive playing field. However, after that, there is a chance to differentiate yourself. So one way we, so we're, we're large inside New Zealand, but we don't want to be caught up in that whole sort of big oil type approach. We think we can do a much better job for our customers by being nimble and responsive to this market. And we felt it was important we showed that through our brand. And people actually have, believe it or not, higher expectations of a local company. They actually said through the research, if anything ever goes wrong in the sector, we expect you as the local firm to sort it out. Uh, so we're happy to live up to those expectations and we felt we should brand ourselves accordingly. And you've made some commitment to uh, have some people on, on the forecourts filling up uh, people's um, cars when they pull in as well? Yeah, we have. It's what we call our forecourt promise. So once a site gets Z branded uh, between the hours of 10 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon, we promise to have someone out there serving you. And if we let you down on that promise, we'll give you a free cup of coffee or some flybys points to acknowledge that we let you down. And, and is this going to mean that you take on more staff? Yeah, it is. Uh, between a combination of what we do on the forecourt 
and our improved food and beverage offer, we are employing uh, more people. Now it's only a, a, a couple, if you like, at each service station, but if you multiply that across you know, 220 odd service stations, that means we actually again contribute to New Zealand through helping with unemployment. And look, there's been a, um, quite a bit of coverage of, of the, um, I guess, the, the, the push to sell uh, food and, and drinks and mm. service stations and obviously yourselves and also BP. I think they brought Alison Holst on board. Mm. So it be interesting taking on Alison Holst. Um, how do the, the margins for um, fuel on the one hand and, and say coffee and other drinks and pies, how do they compare? So the, the gross margins themselves are, are very, very different. I mean, our, our net profit after tax, you know, by the time we paid everybody and, and met our obligations to the government, is about three cents a litre, of which are, you know, about a cent of that relates to what we make through the shop. So if we didn't sell through the shop, we wouldn't be making um, the profits that we are, and we see that's really where the growth is. You know, New Zealanders are reasonably satisfied in terms of demand around their fuel needs. We think we can actually help them with their busy days to say, look, you're coming to us anyway, you're really busy, we can actually make that interruption to your day a little bit easier and satisfy two needs in one. Another thing that you, you say in the prospectus that caught my eye was that over the last 20 years the number of petrol stations in New Zealand's mm. halved, mm. Um, which is a pretty dramatic drop. Do you think that is going to continue? I think it will to some extent. I mean, at the end of the day this is driven by a combination of sort of the economics. It's, it's you know, very, very hard to make money in service stations nowadays. And in some senses, changing demographics as people start to change roads or suburbs, you know, develop or, or diminish. So I think it, it will continue. The, the industry itself is not operating at, if you like, the levels of efficiency that you get in other markets. So there's, you know, comparing to the world, if you like, uh, we have some some way to go. Shell itself, um, under our current brand and Z in the future, we have a very efficient network. We sell about 5.8 million, 5 million litres per annum through our service stations against an industry average of about three. So we've already cons consolidated and concentrated our network. So no plans for you to cut your numbers? Uh, quite the contrary. We're looking to actually expand. We've uh, built a couple of new sites in the last uh, year, and, and they are actually pumping sort of the 9 to 10 million litre type volume. So they're not only good and meet local demand, but they're very economic for us as well. So again, it's a it's a win-win. And obviously Shell is one of the big global companies. They uh, pulled out of downstream business in New Zealand. Mm. Um, there, were, there was a lot of talk at the time of mobile doing the same. Uh, we've obviously got Chevron and, and BP here. Mm. BP's dismissed the idea of leaving New Zealand outright, mm. but I don't think the other two have. Um, any, any sort of talk around either of them leaving at the moment and, and um, any particular assets of theirs that would be of interest if they, if they did? Yeah, so I'm not aware of any talk of them leaving you know, the market at the moment. I think that is subject to almost an annual review. These large companies look at their portfolio and, and decide whether something fits or doesn't fit. So but I think overall the major companies around the world are wanting to bias their investment towards the upstream rather than the downstream. So that, I guess, always puts a question mark over the businesses here. We're not actually actively seeking anything at the moment, but obviously part of our, our bond raising gives us additional flexibility with our core bank debt and so we would be opportunistic around individual assets. And um, obviously too you've got the 25% stake in, mm. in Loyalty New Zealand which is the flybys company plus 17% in, in the oil refinery New Zealand refining company at Marsden Point. Mm. Um, are those long term holdings for Z um, or would you like to increase them or perhaps even sell them at some point? Yeah we're very happy with our positions in both of those companies right now for what we see going ahead of us. I mean flybys is a fantastic part of our customer offer we're the only one who can offer that in, in this market. And a very, very large percentage of our customers, when they come to us, they actually use their flybys card. So it's an absolute winner. Now, um, I attended the Infratil Investor Day in mm. uh, Wellington in March, and uh, you had um, Professor Philip uh, Verliger there, mm. uh, a very thought-provoking uh, man in terms of his views on the oil industry. Mm. Um, and uh, he, he made some comments that really uh, stuck with me. Uh, he talked about you know peak oil. Peak oil, yes, he said, yeah, it's happening, but so what? You know, he, he sort of wasn't that concerned about it. Um, and he was talking about new fuels and new technologies mm. coming in in the next decade and saying, oh, oil producers might be begging to, to, for people to buy their oil in 10 years because mm. of these. How, how, do, how do you see, um, what's your view on peak oil and where do you see things going for Z if these new technologies and fuels do come in? Yes, I think it's really important for people to understand that we're called Z Energy. We're not called Z Hydrocarbon Fuel Distributor. So we're actually in the energy business. We actually see ourselves meeting the transport needs of people on the move. Now at the moment that happens to be hydrocarbon that comes from oil. It could equally be gas, it could equally be electrons, it could be a biofuels. So we're very much open to exploring that space. And we think by being local and more nimble than our overseas competitors, we can actually jump onto things and satisfy latent and then growing consumer demands around that stuff uh, before anybody else. 
this is our only market, so we concentrate on meeting the needs of people here. So we think that enables us to innovate and, and do a bit of R&D in a way that's different to our major competitors. And peak oil? Yeah, peak oil is an interesting one. Um, I personally don't think we're at peak oil. I think even if um, I was wrong, however, I think, uh, as Dr Phil said, there are different dynamics that drive things. So, for example, 20 years ago, the US predicted that they would run out of gas. Right now, they've got 100 years' worth of gas. So there are things that just happen by way of technology breakthroughs. That's natural gas. Natural gas, yeah. yeah. By way of um, mm. technology breakthroughs or further exploration. I think there's also the other side of that, which is you know, shrinking demand or moving demand as people get more into public transport and all that stuff. I mean, the key point for us is Z is in New Zealand. Z is here to stay, and we will be here to satisfy the, the energy needs of our customers for decades. And whatever those energy needs uh, might be. Yeah, that's right. And we will actually mm. see ourselves contributing towards the innovation and the R&D around some of those energy needs. Yeah, you know, we can afford to take a bit of a punt on some of those things. Yeah, you know, a sensible, a sensible punt but doing that because we know that's what's going to work in this market. And there's obviously uh, a sort of step up in, in exploration activity going uh, going on around mm. New Zealand now. Um, you're not obviously directly involved in that, but is that something you're keeping an eye on and perhaps might, might look at uh, down the line? Yeah, we'd certainly keep an eye on it. And I recall when we spoke a year ago, you asked me a, a similar question. I said, look, the, the upstream business sort of requires three things. It, it requires lots of money, it requires technology, and it requires access or relationships. Um, we may be able to play a role in the third of those, but you know, as a company we just don't have the technology to really contribute to that. So if we did anything it would be likely to be by way of partnerships. But that's not on our, our agenda right now, we're very focused on our current strategy. We think we've got a lot to do in the next two years around the current core business and we're looking forward to getting after that. Yeah, look, you've, you've got about, I think, 30% uh, um, of the, the fuel uh, distribution market. Do you have any, any uh, target in terms of growing that market share? Yeah, it's like we're, not, we're not a growth-driven company in terms of market share. We actually want to grow the returns to our shareholders, and, and by doing that, obviously, that creates greater security for our bondholders. Uh, we'd like to get some organic market share. As I said earlier, if there were some um, opportunistic acquisitions that came our way, we'd certainly look at that. We have the capacity for that. But I'm much more focused on, on returns rather than market share. Sometimes when, when you get too focused on growth, you, you grow your amount of sales, but your actual performance or productivity with shareholder funds goes down. So I'm, I'm, I'm not into growth for the sake of growth. And obviously we, we've uh, had fuel prices high this year. Mm. Um, a lot of things going on around the world impacting mm. on those, like the situation in Libya and other Middle East countries. Um, what's your outlook for fuel prices? And when they are at this sort of elevated level compared mm. to historic prices, what does it do to your demand? Yeah, so I think it's awful for everybody, actually. So consumer demand drops off. So the, I guess the, the price point we see as being important is about $2 a litre, and prices have gone through that twice, you know, once in 2008 and, and earlier this year, and sort of petrol demand drops off by about 5%. Now, you know, that's 5% less sales that, that we, we make, so it obviously affects us uh, economically. We don't have a vested interest in prices being high because we don't produce oil, and we, we don't have any you know, sort of interest further up the value chain. So because we don't have that interest further up the value chain and we're aware of the consequence on our customers, our preference actually is for, is for lower prices. Okay, well thanks a lot for coming in Mike. That's Mike Bennett, who's the CEO of Z Energy, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz with another Double Shot interview.